develop a better notation for these antiderivatives, we're going to call on our good old friend Leibniz. You may remember, and I hope you do, that uh, the derivative of any function can be written in Leibniz notation in the form dy by dx. So we're going to start by assuming that dy by dx, which is what is given to us, is our function f of x, and we're going to try and figure out what y is. Again, y, in a way, is the capital F that I showed you earlier, but we found out that was not a very good notation, so we're trying to stay away from that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we've done before, that is, uh, pretend that that fraction, dy by dx, is a real fraction, as opposed to being the limit of a fraction. So we're going to treat it as a fraction and eliminate the denominator. So this will give us something that looks like dy equals f of x dx. This should look familiar because th this is something that in the past we called, in fact, the differential of, well, what should be our capital F of x, but we're not going to deal with that. So it's basically the same thing as the differential. So what we're going to do is we want to eliminate the d because remember, we're after y. Y is the original function uh, whose derivative is the given f of x. So the way we're going to do it is the way that um, has been done from the beginning, and it is we're going to eliminate the d by moving it to the other side uh, in the guise of this strange symbol. Um, I'll tell you right away that that symbol is really an S, what as it looks like, but why is it an S? Well, we're going to be discovering that later. For now, let's just uh, say that is the symbol that is universally used, you know it, and uh, we're going to be using it from now on. Now, this, uh, this new thing now, when written in this way, is something that we call the indefinite integral of f of x. Now, remember, this is not a function, because remember, we're looking for any function whose derivative is f of x. Therefore, we're looking at what mathematicians call a whole set or a whole family of functions. Uh, if I pick any function whose derivative is lowercase f, like our good old capital F of x uh, that we saw earlier, then this indefinite integral is really the set of all functions the form f of x plus a constant c. Okay. So, in, in a way, general antiderivative and indefinite integral are really the same thing. The only difference is the way we write it down, and uh, it, it, we use one or the other depending on the context and depending on our preferences, but they're pretty much the same thing. Now that we have this new notation for indefinite integrals or general antiderivatives, we're going to develop a little bit of terminology so that again we can talk about these uh, items and all these uh, pieces uh, in a more specific and clearer way. So first of all, we're going to start from the function f of x itself. This is the function uh, whose antiderivative, whose uh, indefinite integral we want to uh, find out so we're going to call it the integrand okay so the thing to be integrated okay the factor dx is called the differential of x and of course uh, the whole f of x times dx will be the differential of the function we're not going to be dwelling on that very much for now um, one thing to keep in mind about this dx that it's not there just for show, it's not there just as a label, it will have a very important uh, role to play later on as we uh, actually uh, develop methods for computing antiderivatives. Uh, so keep it in mind, treat it with great respect, it's something to be written down every time. Uh, so don't think that it's a repetitious and boring thing to have to keep it down, to have to uh, write it down at every step because it is important and we're going to do a lot of work with it. Okay? The variable x is also called the variable in, of integration that tells you which one is the independent variable, the variable with respect to which we're computing derivatives and antiderivatives and therefore indefinite integrals. Okay? The process of computing it's called integration so we're going to say that we're going to integrate the integrand to obtain the general antiderivative or the indefinite integral. So everything is going to be integrated all together.